Hello guys and welcome to Squidgy Face Plays. Today's video is on Tinker's Construct. Now, it was quite a hard thing to get Tinker's Construct to work in vanilla with command, so I hope you do enjoy this. Um, so this is basically the smeltery mod, if you've ever seen that on PC or anything like that. It's, it's a pretty cool mod and I've tried my best to recreate this in vanilla Minecraft using just commands. We are, of course, on the Bedrock edition of Minecraft. So let's get things started by using a little spawn egg I have here just to quickly spawn in our smeltery. There it is in all of its smeltery goodness. <laughs> so to get this to start even working, we need to power it. So if we open up this furnace, it says smeltery fuel. And we can chuck in a lava bucket and some cobblestone. Anything will do to power this. Anything that you can find that will make this furnace stay lit. That is all you need to power it. You don't doesn't need to be lava or anything like that. So let's show you how this things work. First things first, let's flick this lever up. Because when it's up, it means it's in smeltery mode. So what that means is when I place a block here, it will smelt the block into its irony goodness. And instead of giving me just one of each it will give me two of each so i've just used five right so that should be five ingots but in this one it's ten and the same with gold it will do the same with gold instead of smelt like you know smelting it normally in a furnace and you're only getting a certain amount you can smelt it in this and get double the amount so oh well let's do it one more time there we go so that should mean now i've got ten of each but i've only technically used five of each so that's the one side of it. That's the, an, a good side of this thing that gets you, you know, some extra stuff. Now, the other side of it is... Let me just move things around because I'm a bit unorganized, I'll be honest. So let's move things around. Let me get some tools. So the other side of it is if we flick this lever down, that means the pouring mode is activated, which means you can then make new weapons from the, like, from the things that you have. And the cool thing about this is you can add like custom enchants, and I'll get into that in a second. So, say we wanted a, I don't know, let's say an iron shovel. What we need to do is put three pieces of iron into this. As you can see, it says re ready to pour iron. So we get our wooden shovel. It has to be a wooden shovel. It can't be anything else. If we throw the wooden shovel onto the pouring table, we will get a, an iron like shovel. And I know what you're thinking. Well, I can just make an iron shovel anyway. It doesn't really matter. But if you look, this says iron shovel, writable. So you've now got a writable iron shovel. And I'll show you what that means in a second. Let me just get a few more um, different things just to show you how this all works. Let's get a golden axe. Why not? And we'll get a couple of diamond tools as well. So it has to be three blocks every time, no matter what material you're using. Obviously, this is... a Oh, I dropped it through it. This is only going to work, obviously, with iron, diamond, and gold. Oh, why do I, I keep doing these things? Because I'm stupid. <laughs> it won't work with anything else. Obviously, it's not modded. It can't have, like, you know, emerald tools because it just won't work. But how it does work, this, I think it works really, really well, as it is anyway. So... To get these custom enchants, and, well not custom enchants, but enchantments easily, once you have a writable um, weapon or item, you can then th combine it on the ground with a block of a specific thing, if that makes sense. So lapis is going to be, I think that's like looting and stuff. Then we have redstone, which is efficiency, obsidian, which is unbreaking, and then we've got block of claw quartz quartz which is um sharpness so if i throw say the sword on the ground with the quartz it'll do a cool effect and it'll give you a diamond sword of sharpness three but that diamond sword is no longer um writable so you can't actually add another enchantment on this using this method so it just won't work so then i know say we want a really efficient axe say we throw some redstone with it and there you go, you get some really cool particles and then a, a golden axe, efficiency three. Um, then we've got, oh, what, can, what should we do for that? Okay, so if we do unbreaking next with the obsidian, so if we throw an obsidian block with it, it will give you unbreaking. 
So there's our Unbreaking 3 Diamond Pickaxe. And then finally, um, we have our Lapis Lazuli Block, which gives you, I think, four, yeah, Fortune 2. But the cool thing about this is, on pickaxes and stuff like that, it will give you Fortune 2, right? Um, but if we use it on a sword, if I let me just uh, smelt some more gold up, just for it to ready to pour. So if we use this on a sword, it's not actually going to give us the same enchantment. It's not going to give us fortune. It's actually going to give us looting, if I remember correctly. There you go. Yeah, it's going to give us looting instead of fortune. So, like, it does the same thing. Looting and fortune are the same kind of enchantment, if you know what I mean, but with different abilities. So obviously, this works better to kill things and, you know, that stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly... Go into my command room, and I will show you all of the commands that make all this work. Hopefully, you guys can follow along, because it is a bit of a is a bit of a tedious thing to do. I will be I will be honest. It's not it's not the easiest of things to do. So first things first, you're gonna want to build this little uh, construct here, which is essentially just your smeltery. I've done it as like 3x3x3 three by three by three like that. I've put a lid on it. I've put some glass in the middle. But then these are the things you must have. You must have a furnace in this corner. This block must be empty in this corner. Then we have some sort of container. I've used a dropper with a that's just been renamed. So it's a dropper in there. We've got some sort of block here in with a lever here. This can be any block. I've just chose to have it as the scaffolding because it looks like a cool little table. But that's my personal preference and then inside i don't know if you can see right there we have got a um a hopper going into this dropper like so then what you want to do is on give me, if you give me two seconds not in that chest it's in this chest then what you want to do is you want to rename get an, uh, an armor stand and rename your said armor stand to smeltery like so it goes invisible, but that's because I've got a little thing here that sets this to invisible. And that's purely to make it obviously appear like there's nothing there. Obviously, we know there is. But if I flick that, it'll come back again. And I will just go and show you. Oh, I got stuck. I will go show you over here with this one. One's appeared on top of here now. That's because it does the same thing. What I'm going to quickly do, though, is just break that because we don't need that one there for now. So, we'll come back here. So, once you've built your smeltery, the first thing we're going to learn how to do, like, add to the, the whole th thing of it, is how to do this thing where we put... Oh, wait. It needs to be powered. <laughs> I'm silly. So, yeah. We're going to learn how to do this. So, when you place a block there, it will smelt it and put some blocks in there. That's the first thing we're going to, like, learn how to do because I think it's, like, an easier place to start. Uh... I've only got three examples, which is iron, gold, and um, diamond. So let's start things off with execute at e type equals armor stand name equals smeltery tilde 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 test for block tilde minus one tilde minus four tilde minus two lit furnace. What that's doing is testing that there is a lit furnace in this position. Secondly, is kind of the same thing so execute at e type equals armor stand name equals smeltery then we're going to test for block iron ore at this position so the opposite position to the to the furnace and then finally we've just got to check we're going to test for blocks uh which is basically armor stand uh execute at e type equals armor stand name equals smeltery tilde 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 test for blocks Tilde three, tilde three, tilde three, tilde three, blah, 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 blah. And then at that specific location. What that's basically doing, so that is checking that this block here, so where this this lever is the same as this lever here. So if it's on the up position, then it will work fine. If it's on the up position, you can do that and it will smelt it perfectly fine, yeah? Obviously, if that was in the down position, it would give you a different, obviously, ability so once you got that we've got that going into a comparator we have then got that going into two 
um, droppers, which are both filled with iron ingots. Now, I've just used a clone command uh, here and under there just to make things a bit easier for myself so it just repeats all the time and always refills it. So that's a little clone command, like you can see, just cloning these two furnaces, uh, droppers, sorry. So there's two here, um, both facing any direction, really matter. Just make sure they're on top of each other just for ease of use. So then we've got a repeater on two ticks, oh, or is that one tick? I'm not sure. <laughs> Going into an impulse unconditional needs redstone, which is execute at E, type equals armor stand, name equals smeltery, set block and then we've got air if that makes sense that's basically once you place a block there it will instantly turn that into air yeah then from there we've got another repeater going outwards on full delay so on four ticks of delay and what that's going to do is execute at e type equals armor stand name equals smell to refill and then it's going to fill um the front of this so from kind of like that corner there to the top corner there with iron blocks or gold blocks or whatever uh, but that's but this this is going to fill it with air to get rid of the gold blocks which you'll see in a sec so the second one is teleport iron ingots to uh, basically it's uh, executing at e type equals armor stand name smeltery again I'm going to say that a lot so I might just skip past that bit every time I do this one now and then we're going to TP at e type equals item name equals iron ingot so the iron ingots that spit out of here they're going to be teleported to tilde 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 which is minus one and minus two which is essentially if i just break into here let me just open this up so it's easier to see for you guys it's going to teleport them just above this hopper here so that's what that command does that command teleports the iron ingots that spat out from there just above this hopper here which then feeds it into this output bit here now I can, i'm going to try and get this to show you can you see that did you see the the iron uh, the gold go in there it's really hard to do see like the gold goes in there a bit of thing goes over there just to mask everything off well yeah that's what that does so the last one is execute at type equals armor stand name equals smeltery tilde 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 fill tilde one tilde minus four tilde minus one tilde minus one tilde minus two tilde minus one iron block now that basically actually let me switch to the iron just to show you a bit better so that's basically filling that gap with iron like so just like the air does so once that fills with iron it doesn't fill the whole lot of that just that first little gap just to give the appearance of it filling the whole lot and then obviously the command i showed you before this one will obviously set it back to air now, I'm not going to show you all three of these because all three of these are exactly the same. The only difference is the block is gone from iron to gold to diamond. It's no different. It's all the same. So, like, um, here it's going to test for gold ore. Here it's going to test for diamond ore. And then here it's going to teleport. Uh, no, it's not. That one's going to teleport um, diamonds and that one's going to teleport gold ingots this one's going to set it to gold blocks and this one's going to set it to diamond blocks that those three commands are incredibly similar they're actually the same ones just with different names so then we have the second set of commands now this one it says here test for block lit furnace so the same command we did before so this one Again, is execute our armor stand, name equals smattery, tilde, 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 test for block, lit furnace. Then this is going to be testing for iron ore. Again, this one is now testing for the other um, the other um, position of the, the lever. So this time it tests for this one over here. I'm hoping you guys are still following along for this. But yeah, this is testing for that over there now this is where things slightly change we're gonna have to add a scoreboard objective now scoreboard objectives are pretty easy to add so i'll show you how to do that now so we're going to do slash scoreboard objectives add and then we're going to um, add one called tinkers there we go so tinkers uh dummy and the display name 
I just called uh, mine the smeltery. So chuck that in to your thing. Obviously, all of that already exists for me, so it won't actually that won't actually work for me personally right now. But you type that in into yours, and it should work perfectly fine. So after you've done those, a quick recap. Sorry. So after you've done the you know the the furnace, then testing for the iron, then testing for the lever. We then want to add um, to uh, our scoreboard. So scoreboard players add iron tinkers one. Then we're going to set the block to air. Keep in mind, I am going pretty fast and this might seem a bit complicated, but all of these will be in the description below and I will answer any questions. And the last one for this one is just fill in iron block. That's that. And then these two are exactly the same. Except these two are for gold and iron. Again, scoreboard players add gold tinkers one. And then we set air. And then we do the fill command. And that does it again. And all that is doing is filling that with iron like that. If that makes sense. Like that. And then, obviously, it's waiting for us to add three of them like so. Okay? Let me just get a wooden um, tool just to quickly show you again that it, it does work. There we go. So then the next set of commands is these three here. And this one is quite the easiest one, I think. This is just to tell you that it's ready to pour. So scoreboard players test iron at tinkers three. So it's testing if it's at three. And then we've got title at P, action bar, ready to pour, iron. And these are the same for each, except I've changed the word uh, uh, iron to gold. Again, that's I think that's pretty self-explanatory, really, what that does. Okay, so the next set is these right here. Now, each of these is your different... Um, what's the word? Different um, different variation on your weapon. So what you're going to need to do is before you start that command, what you need to do is get some... Well, we need to get one of each of these. So one iron sword, one gold sword, one diamond, one iron axe, one gold axe, like so on and so forth. And you want to rename them to add the word writable at the end. That's what I've done, just added the word writable. Obviously, you can change it however you want, but that's what I've used in this instance. So basically, I'm, just, I'm not going to show you all of these again. I'm just going to show you one of these because it doesn't need to be shown all of them. Because you can adapt them to just replicate them because all these are the same command just over and over and over again. So then we have... To start this command off is scoreboard players test iron tinkers three. So if that's at three, and what then we have is execute at e type equals name wooden sword test for block tilde tilde tilde. So minus one under that is scaffolding. So it's testing for uh, a wooden weapon or tool under with that scaffolding block underneath it. That's what this command does. Then we've got a comparator going into a dropper with your weapons and tools in that have the word writable at the end. That goes into a one tick repeater. Then we have TP at E type equals iron sword writable to at E wooden sword essentially. So taking teleporting the iron one to the wooden one. Then we're going to kill at a type equals name equals wooden sword. That just kills the wooden sword. Then it's going to reset your iron scoreboard. So iron uh, scoreboard players set iron to zero, which basically gets rid of any iron that's that's going to be in the there. And then it's going to be execute at a type equals armor stand name equals smeltery. Fill tilde one, tilde minus four, tilde minus one, and so on and so on. And that's going to basically set that back to air, right? And that's it. It's just repeated over and over and over again for every different one. So this is like, uh, this is your iron sword. This is going to be your gold. And this is going to be your diamond sword. And then obviously you've got your gold, diamond, and iron axe, pickaxe, and shovel. It's all the same ones, just repeated. Again, these commands will be in the, the description, essentially. Then we have these commands. Now this 
this is probably going to take you the longest just because it's a bit of a pain just to just keep repeating them over and over and over again. So what this is, this is the command where it detects if there's a, like a weapon mixed with a block of something. Okay, redstone doesn't work with that one, but um, it tests where there's a weapon and a block together and it will give you the enchanted version. Now again, this does require a little bit of setup. What you're going to do is you want to get um, just a normal sword or whatever and you want to enchant whatever you want so basically just to get get your weapons that you want the enchantment to be and make sure you've got one of each so like one gold one iron one blah 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 of each one right and then once you've done that it's pretty similar to the other one so this one is execute at e type equals item name equals Iron Axe Writable, so the name of your weapon or tool with the writables uh, tag on it. Tilde, 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 test for at E, type equals item, name equals block of redstone, R equals 2. That basically means test to see if your writable item is near a, within two blocks of, of you know one of your special blocks. That goes into a comparator. Then we've got in... A dispenser your you know your enchanted tool or weapon I, again i've just got this a uh, repeating command to make sure it's always there that's a one tick delay repeater going into the next block which is tp at e type equals item name iron axe to iron axe writable so that's basically taking this axe to the writable axe if that makes sense then we have kill at e type equals item Name equals block of redstone. So that's killing the redstone once you've chucked it on the floor with the, the sword. Then it's actually going to kill the writable sword. Which is kill at E type equals item name equals iron sword writable. Or iron axe writable, sorry. Then finally, we've just got the particle effect at the very end. Which is execute at E type equals item. Name equals iron axe. Tilde, tilde, tilde. Particle. Minecraft. Uh, test underscore color curve tilde 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 again you can have whatever you really want now i'm not going to show you every one of those commands because that would be ridiculous and incredibly long to show you every single one of these commands you only really need to know the basic first one and then you can just adapt it like i've showed you and then finally or almost finally we've got this command which is the spawn egg which is this thing so when you like put it on the ground it will spawn the the actual smeltery thing itself so what that is that's execute at e type equals endermite name equals smeltery tilde 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 clone and then what you're going to do is you're going to clone is get the coordinates from the bottom corner up to the top other corner which is like over here like so so basically get the coordinates for this entire smeltery system where are we over here to so get the coordinates for that and then you want after you got the coordinates you want tilde 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 but you want it as minus three and minus two masked that will basically center your build so the way it is so it will center it so it'll be exactly in the middle of where you need it to be B. yeah if that makes sense um then we've got execute at endermite name equals smeltery fill my uh no e name equals smeltery tilde tilde minus one tilde fill one tilde tilde minus two tilde minus one tilde tilde two stone brick zero what that basically is doing is basically putting the floor in so it, like that little stone brick floor it's putting it in because if i did it any other way it wouldn't be able to clone it all without bringing the floor blocks with it and I didn't want that to happen. Then we have um, TP, or so execute at endermite, name equals smeltery, um, Y equals four, you don't, okay wait, I don't know why that's there, that doesn't need to be there. <laughs> I think that was from something else. That does not need to be there. So it's just smeltery, tilde tilde tilde, TP at E, type equals armor stand, Name equals smeltery two tilde tilde four tilde so that's four blocks above the endermite, and then finally just kill at e type equals endermite name equals smeltery. That's that, and then the very very last command, which is what makes those armor stands invisible, 
which is simply effect at e type equals armor stand name equals smeltery invisibility one one true now you can have this always active if you want i've just got a little toggle on mine this was just so i could see it whilst i was building and and stuff like that but yeah that is pretty much it guys that is the smeltery mod all there for you i've tried my best to make it I've tried my best to make it as close to as close to the original as possible. Um, I am sorry if this was a bit of a confusing video, but I kind of got excited when I got started building this because like I was so happy that I was building like a, such a big project and I loved it. Um, if you guys did like this, please like it. If you didn't like it, let me know. Just tell me how I can improve. But yeah, that's all for this episode. Again, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And I will see you all again in the next video. Bye.